Hey guys, DMS3TV here today. I have for you two budget IEMs from Final Audio, the E2000 and E3000. Let's check them out. So starting off, the E2000 and E3000 are very similar in build. Really the only difference is that the E3000 has a different finish, a little bit more of a chrome color. Both have metallic housings, the same tips which you can adjust in different directions based off the curvature of your ear canal, and non-removable cables. Now I do see a weak point of these cables being where they connect to the actual IEM itself, though I have been using these for quite some time. Uh, several months actually and have had no issues with them as a daily driver. Now fit on the tips themselves may vary. Uh, I personally still think that Simgo has some of the best tips I've ever tried so I'm using my Simgo tips with these though I have heard slight differences between the Simgo tips and the final tips. And for the purpose of this review, I'm going to be talking about what they sound like with the stock tips. Now, you could wear these like standard IEMs, like the One More Triple Drivers or anything like that, where they just stick in your ears and hang down, or they come with little rubber pieces that clip on so that you can wrap them around the top of your ear. I personally prefer that type of fit because things like that tend to stay in my ear better, but it's up to you. Now, build-wise for the price, I really don't have any complaints about these. I do kind of wish that they had detachable cables, but this is a $44 and $54 IEM, with the E2000 at 44 and the E3000 at 54. Uh, they also come with a carrying case, but it's nothing to write home about. But once again, what you're really paying for in price to performance in this range is more sound. Now comfort, I haven't had any issues in that regard. They're incredibly light and not intrusive and their footprint in my ear is relatively small. So with all that said, let's talk about sound, the thing we really care about. Now I wanna start out sound with saying I do definitely have a preference. I personally find the E2000 to be better than the E3000, which is interesting because the E2000 is the cheaper of the two at $44. But the E2000 has a more relaxed upper mid-range and lower treble range. They're not dark per se, and vocal presence is still relatively intimate, but it is not as peaky as the E3000. The E3000 has a bit of a peak in the upper mid-range and lower treble that I find to be just a little bit harsh, though it isn't necessarily a bad thing for some people. It very much reminds me of the sound signature of the Simgo EN700 Pro, though a little bit less full than those in the uh, mid-range and lower mids. The E2000, however, is extremely relaxed sounding. The sound signature is, like I said, a little bit more relaxed with both of these in the lower mid-range and in the E2000 a little bit more in the upper mid-range and lower treble, though it does pick back up in the higher treble. Um, the highs are very sweet with the E2000, and it kind of reminds me of the 650 if the 650 had a slightly less full lower mid-range and more bass extension. Now these are in no way comparable to the 650 in detail, because these are, as I said, a very budget IEM, but in terms of price to performance, I'm going to say that these are a significantly better price to performance value than many other IEMs I've tried under $100, including the One More Triples, the pretty much entire KZ lineup that I've tried so far. I haven't tried these ES6. Uh, or several of the newer ones, but I'm going to. But as of right now, when I'm filming this video, I don't know of another IEM under $100 that outperforms the Final Audio E2000. Now, these are also low impedance. You don't have to worry about having an amp to drive them. You can plug them into pretty much anything, a phone, a laptop, a Bluetooth adapter if you so choose, which by the way, review on this thing coming. It's the Blue Wave Git and it is pretty cool. But all things wrapped up, I am very impressed with a 6.4 millimeter dynamic driver used in both. And I think the tuning has a lot to do with it. Now, I am going to be comparing these to several other budget IEMs in the same price range in my upcoming IEM roundup. So there you have it, I'm doing another budget IEM roundup like my old one. I did about, I'd say, close to a year ago. This one's going to be featuring a lot more IEMs in the roughly $50 or less range. And as always, everything featured in this video will be linked in the video description. But that's all I've got today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. Leave a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. And if you want early access to my videos plus exclusive content, check out the Patreon linked in the video description. And until next time, guys, peace.